What's up, everybody? Welcome to another week of Fed Dead Redemption. Robert O'Neill, the Oracle of Wrestling, here to break down another exciting week in the World Wrestling Federation as we continue on the road to WrestleMania 39. Uh, Oracle, how are you doing today, bud? Yep, you good? You back? There we go. I'm doing good. I think I, I think I died there for a minute. Uh, hopefully, I'm back. <laughs> yeah, um, we're good now. Uh, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, it's not too bad. But uh, I'm here. I'm good. Uh, again, uh, apologies for my technical difficulties. Laptops are expensive. I will try to get a new one as when I can, but it's just not in the it's not in the cards right now. No, you're good, man. It it adds to the charm of the show, so don't right. worry. Yeah, um, got a lot to talk about this week. All three shows. I said three shows. I know we don't usually talk about NXT, but we got NXT talk this week. They all uh, they all kind of delivered on what they were trying to do. So. Um, I guess we'll just start with Roadblock because, again, it is the one that we cover the least on here. Um, I thought they did a really good job. You know, these these TV specials and takeovers are usually a safe bet. And uh, there was one match on the show that I thought wasn't great. But uh, other than that, yeah, I think they did a really good job, get, especially, like, setting the pieces for Stand and Deliver. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I don't love Gargano and Waller as a match, but... I yeah. mean, what was Gargano really doing on the main roster? What was his value there? Let's actually, you yeah, know. let's start with that because what do you think of that segment overall? I think Shawn Michaels actually did a really good job, and they do a lot of you know work shoots and stuff in wrestling. And I know they get tiring, but I actually really like this one. You know, they 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 did do a good job of it. They you know they 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 did a decent job of setting it up well, and and I, I still kind of think uh, Waller's probably going to eat the the sweet chin music at uh, yeah. At uh, at at uh, stand and deliver, I think that's probably going to be the payoff in terms of the thing with Sean. But um, you know, I I I, I kind of think Waller's still going to win, um, mm-hmm. but I do think Sean's going to give him a sweet chin music for like a near fall at some point in the match. Yeah, yeah, no, that that's fair. I mean, it's good for him to get a premier match. Clearly, they see a lot mm-hmm. in him. I know the Braun Breaker match, you know, had kind of mixed reviews, but this feels like a better role for him anyway. Maybe he doesn't need to be the top guy. Maybe just, you know, a big kind of, you know, everyone does the Australian Miz thing anyway. Maybe he could lean into that and not necessarily be a top guy, but find a role that works for him. Yeah, I mean, Gargano is going to feel like a bigger deal at Stand and Deliver than he would at Mania. That's another good point. Um, Plus, you know, you got to get people to go to that show. It's going to be like 930 in the morning uh, L.A. time. So you got to convince them that there's some sort of draw worth going to see there. Right. (laughs) Um. Yeah, we don't have to go match by match. I think, uh, you know, Dijak and Tony D'Angelo was fine. Good stip match. Um, Mm -hmm. They did a lot with that, you know. I think both guys kind of wrestle the same match every time they wrestle, but, you know, it's fine. You can can get by with it. It was was a good match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The Creeds and Braun against Jinder and his guys, it started off in a way that I really liked where it just was kind of a mess, just kind of guys hitting each other, throwing each other around. But then they kind of kept that going too long. It lost its way a little bit. But overall, um, would definitely like to see Braun and the Creed's team up more. Yeah, they 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 looked fun as a team. The match was kind of a mess, in my opinion. I, I didn't yeah. think it was that good. But in terms of their like 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 that clip that went around of them doing like the crazy like uh, backflip, yeah, whatever it was, you know, you know, ending in the top rope four fifty. That was good stuff. Um. It's just, yeah, the match wasn't great, but I mean, gender who I enjoy, but gender and gender and share are not necessarily the guys to be the best foils for that type of, you know, type of offense. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, I know it was later in the show, but did you like the Braun and Carmelo segment to kind of get that officially set up? I know it's a match a lot of people have been waiting for. Uh yeah, I, I thought I thought that was a I, I I thought that was kind of a neat little like unexpected moment on the show that they had where you know where Braun came down and and, and uh, called Mello out. Um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting because really both guys should be going to the main roster. Yeah. Um, and I think I think both guys have regressed, uh, especially Braun Mello. I think has always been a little bit overrated. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it'd be better served if they both moved up. Um, but, you know. Yeah, I think 
probably Mello should win and then Braun should come up, but Mello shouldn't be down there past like SummerSlam. Yeah. There's no reason. And that's the other thing too. Remember when they like switched over and they said, you know, two years, you're going to be on the main roster. You're going to be out of here. We're coming up on that two years for that first, uh, you know, crop of guys will be right after SummerSlam. So a lot of decisions are going to have to be made pretty soon. And, uh, you know, you see guys that are main roster ready. You see guys that aren't quite there yet. And then you see guys who probably won't be around for much longer. Um, You can kind of make your own opinions there. Um, Yeah. And then I do want to talk about uh, Roxanne Perez and Miko Satamora. Just first of all, did you like the match? And did you like the angle after? Uh, I like the match. I don't like Shawn Michaels throwing all of his angles from his career into the stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's not like the, it's just, to me, it's just like, it's too, to me, it's, to me, it's almost, it's just too meta, wink, wink, nod, nod. Mm. Um, and it also, did, it didn't seem like there was any reason to do it. There's no, there was no reason to do it with Roxanne here. It was just, oh, let's do my angle. Yeah, I guess the story was, was like, you know, she's yeah. been training hard and really pushing herself. And then, but even then, like, that yeah, wasn't really yeah, this. That wasn't really the story of the Sean and Owen one either. Just no. you know, hit him with a move and he passed out or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. Like I would have rather just done something to set up who she's facing and stand and deliver. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, which I think is Tiffany Stratton, right? It seems like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess they could go back to Cora Jade one more time. I know she's been away dealing with some stuff. You know, she's ready. Maybe they'll do one more there. But uh, yeah, it seems like they're gearing up Tiffany Stratton, uh, which you know. That's kind of felt like something they've been interested in doing for a while, and I think she can really live up to it. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm with you there. Tiffany Stratton's good. Yeah. But yeah, overall, I mean, they do a good job with these NXT TV specials, I think. You know, a couple matches we didn't talk about that were just kind of there, but that's going to happen because it's still TV. Like, they did what they had to do, I think, to set the table to get ready for Stand and Deliver. And that was what was necessary here. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree, definitely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now we can backtrack to Raw, because I know you wanted to talk about the ending. Um, you know, the Usos are back together as a unit. It looked like Jay and Sammy were going to reunite for really a long time. They kept it lingering for quite a bit to the point where I was convinced they were going to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they did a really good job with that, honestly. Like, you know, you had, uh, it seemed like Jay and Sammy were back together and then they just beat him up. And then you have this added element of Kevin Owens still not ready to forgive him. And, you know, Cody seems to be kind of working to resolve their relationship. I don't know if you saw that uh, mm-hmm. in the background there, that was a nice touch, but yeah, yeah. take us through the end of Raw, man. How'd you feel about it? Yeah. So it was, it was, it was good stuff, man. Like, um, you know, I, I still, I'm still a petty bastard and can't get over the blunder at elimination chamber. Yeah. But um, you know, they've, they've still kept the strong crowds and the, and the good responses and, and, you know, um, the J turn was always going to come. I think that was always obvious. It was just how they were going to do it. I thought they executed it really well. I thought his promo on SmackDown was great. Um, I, I really like the involvement of Cody Rhodes is like, he got involved with bloodline business and like, you know, that him sort of in the background trying to, uh, as you pointed out, resolve Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn's friendship and relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just, just good detailed work. Some of the, it's kind of the, it's the type of booking that Triple H is actually pretty good at in terms of that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, yeah, this was, this was, and of course, you know, Heyman obviously is deeply involved. Um, but um, yes, yeah, this is, yeah, this was, this was a, this was a great segment. Of, you know, to end Raw, the heat and stuff for it was amazing. Um, the ending uh, to SmackDown was awesome as well. Uh, just, just, just a really good, uh, really good sort of setup for for the uh, tag feud going forward. Am I here? Yeah. No, we're good. Cool. Yeah. No, I think they did a great job. I know we talk about this every week, but do you think this is a week that Kevin and Sammy finally get back together? <sighs> They've got to do it. Like, I, I'm afraid that they're going to end up like doing this deal where like. They do it like I don't know, like on the twenty on the twenty fourth episode or on the March twenty fourth episode of SmackDown or something. Yeah, or something where they just extend it as long as they possibly can. Yeah, um, I think you do it. You know, this week and then maybe the go home Raw, go home SmackDown. You do, you know, uh, Kevin and Sammy and uh, Cody against 
you know, the Usos and Solo. I think I think what they're going to do is is they're going to do Kevin, Sammy, and Cody versus I'm with you versus the Usos and Solo probably on March 24th, and they'll probably have you know yeah. Hopefully this week they will uh, you know do the deal where Kevin and Sammy are uh, are, are back together and they'll announce a tag title match maybe next week or maybe on maybe this coming Friday. I don't know. It's it's yeah. it's it's tough to predict. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ginger King, when do you think the bloodline will break up? Leading up to SummerSlam, they do solo against Roman. I think Roman's probably not going to be around from like after Mania till after Money in the Bank. So I don't know if you keep it going with just the Usos and Solo. I don't know if the Usos are going to be around, to be honest with you. Everyone might just get a break after all this, and Solo might just kind of be on his own for a while, you know, going into King of the Ring as a threat and... You know, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, Roman and the Usos are all gone, but I think Roman's definitely going to take some time off. So oh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see, you know, do you keep that story going without Roman? You know, is Heyman still involved with them? Um, I think Solo and Roman at SummerSlam would be a blast, though. Oh, for sure. For I'd sure. love that. Um, a lot of people don't want the Bloodline story to end and want it to go like two more years, but yeah, it's time. It's time. It's time to end. Like we said it leading up to Clash of the Castle, and they didn't do it, and they got some more stuff out of it, but that's mostly because they added Sammy to it. I don't know what mm. you can add to it to really make well, it. I've heard some people say there's a lot of twists and turns you can do with it, and I'm not saying that they're wrong, but it's like, nah. You don't I have think, to, though. Yeah, like, exactly. You don't have to do that. You have you a chance. Can... I know people online think what they think about Cody, and it's different than what the people in the arena think, but like you have a chance to actually make a guy. Mm-hmm. You need to just have Cody beat him clean. And I say clean, like obviously the Usos will get involved or whatever, but you have to have Cody beat him, you know, crossroads, middle of the ring to end WrestleMania. Right. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, it's. I still think there's a chance Jay costs Roman at the end. I, I, I can see think, that. I still think uh, Joe's prediction there is actually still still valid at this point. Mm hmm. Um, even even with the even with the strong turn on Sammy on Monday, yeah, yeah, and I think and that's a good point too. Like, I think the thought probably is if Cody doesn't beat Roman, then Jay does, but I just don't see it. Like, and maybe no, it's on me. I can see Jay it. costing Roman. Yeah, and then having, and maybe it's my fault because he was a tag guy for ten years, yeah. and like, but I just mm-hmm. I don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, they were able to do it early in the pandemic because, you know, it was still new and fresh and, you know, it, it worked. But, like, how much of that match was aided by Roman just talking shit to him the whole time, which he really shouldn't do in front of actual crowds because no one can hear it. <laughs> so, right. I don't right. know. Like, it's it's got to be Cody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kirby wants to know our thoughts on Saray leaving the territory for the best. I mean, yeah, they clearly didn't have anything for her. You know, they brought her in and then changed the uh, format of the show. And I know COVID was happening and all that. It's just she should go, you know, work in Japan. She's obviously a lot happier there. She's a lot uh, I agree. better there. And I liked her in the short burst that we got in NXT. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but she's only, what, 23 or 24. She could be back at some point, too. I mean, you know, it's just for the best for now. Yeah. Yeah, not to mention um, the stereotypical gimmicks were not, you know, not in her favor. So yeah, um, I do want to talk about Bianca and Oscar because the build is not great so far. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's a typical sort of um, Triple H. The one thing you can notice that Vince is not completely back and doing everything. Um. And for what it's worth, I believe, Dave, that he was there not just to see John Cena, but to do other things. But, I mean, I yeah. think everybody figured that. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> Triple H doesn't like to have his opponents. Like, they'll do, like, show-closing brawls. But, right. <laughs> and, you know, contract signings. But he doesn't like to have his match. He doesn't like to have the people touch. He doesn't like to have them wrestle. Mm. Whereas with events, they'll have, you know, they'll wrestle each other 15 times before the – before the actual show. Right, exactly. Um, and don't get me wrong, they can still yeah. save it. You know, they just right. need to get moving. Right, exactly. There's, and, and I think part of the problem is Triple H is like, it's just, I mean, you can only do so much. Oscar comes out and yeah, has, you know, ooze coming down of her chin and mm-hmm. 
Bianca looks scared. I mean, you, you, there's only so many times you can do that before it becomes lame, you know? Yeah. And Cody's got a good point. You know, the match will be good. Um, I don't know that we could necessarily make that guarantee for the SmackDown match. I know Charlotte, you know, in big matches usually will bring it. Um, her match on SmackDown was not particularly good, but, you know. <laughs> Um, and really a lot of the build for that has just been Rhea's there with Judgment Day and not really worried about Charlotte. So they gotta they gotta get a move on with these a little bit. Yeah. Um that's true. Um I'm being biased against Charlotte, but part of me wonders that's just Charlotte being Charlotte, but um you're not wrong. Rhea's definitely yeah. um distracted with other shit going on, uh, you know, in storyline. Um, but yeah, beauty okay. either and not back yet. <laughs> yeah, you're good now. I know we're losing. Up, oh, maybe not. Hello, everyone. I'm gone. Hello, Joe. I was in. I was on the bench waiting okay. for. I'm back now. To... There we go. Back. Hello. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been lucky today. Said, usually, um, usually, 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 I'll, uh, I'll, you know, I'll flatline when Bobby's talking. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, yeah. I was getting on a roll there, and then I just kind of vanished. Well, I was just trashing the Charlotte Rhea feud, and how that's not really, you know, yeah, yeah, that's not um, really any good. Either. I showed up because I was told that you said the words Joe was right, and so I. <laughs> Quickly got into this. Quickly got into the stream yard. I was just saying that I still think your Jay, Jay Uso prediction can hold for him costing yeah. Roman still. I hope so. I mean, it'd be a cool touch, right? It'd be a nice yeah. way to put a bow mm -hmm. on that part of the story. Um, I'm, I actually was listening to the show, so I'm just playing around. But boys, seem to be having a good time. The uh, the roadblock. I'm going to catch up on the on the Roxanne match, but um, it got some pretty positive reviews, which I was glad to see. I mean, she's obviously a tremendous worker mm -hmm. and. Yeah, yeah same more of the same thing, obviously. So, yeah, mm -hmm. shit. Like I have to, I have to watch that one. Uh, carry on, Bobby, as you were. Yeah. Um. The uh, Cena and Theory thing, it was good. Um. You know, I, I like Cena doing that. I don't know if it's necessarily the best idea when Theory has to, you know, come back after WrestleMania and still be on TV, and John Cena doesn't. But I'm also not going to defend Theory, so whatever. <laughs> Like maybe you shouldn't talk about the piped in crowd noise or whatever, but who cares? I guess. You know, it's I, funny, like uh all, all the all the memes and jokes people were making. Cena like post John Cena on the mic after the CM Punk feed. <laughs> it's like he's savage, <laughs> man. Like yeah. There's a reason there's a reason why Roman Reigns is better on the mic now. Oh yeah. Remember five years ago when he got just destroyed by Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Okay. Do, do people not remember this, or am I wrong? Do people not remember when Cena eviscerated the Rock on the mic. Oh yeah, he did. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. He killed him. Mm -hmm. I think the Roman feud was when it changed though, because that's when he started doing the work shoot stuff like crazy mm -hmm. often. Remember? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Do you think it's like? Do you think it's kind of layered subtle politics? Subtle is a strong word, but do you think it's politics because like? I was thinking about this earlier. I, I was doing a solo show and someone asked about it. And I was kind of pondering, like, even if Fury beats him clean in the middle, mm -hmm. the damage is kind of done, right? Like, exactly. Because Cena wasn't saying that he's not a good wrestler. He was saying he's a loser. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a fake. You know, he's a phony. And on some level, that I respect that in the sense that, like, yeah, I agree. But if that's what John thinks, then why are we doing the feud? You know, it's like the kind of... Like, it just interests me. I haven't got a problem with it because yeah. I don't, you know, it's theory. I, I don't know. Like, there's obviously other problems with theory, but it's hard enough to come back from a failed cash-in, and then he did it in such a stupid way in general. <laughs> right. Like, it's just hard to see him as, like, a top-level threat ever again. None of us buy him, right, as a top guy? No. But yeah. I guess the point is, if Cena doesn't buy him, why do the feud? And if he does buy him, why do the promo? I guess is the – to me, that's the, like – the weird kind of line to walk. Like if he actually wants to get Fury over, which he might not again, I don't know. Then why do the segment? It's kind of. Yeah. Well, they didn't, I, they didn't have a producer. So I guess John was just out there uh, shooting, man. Okay. I, I, I will say I love the segment because it was just so entertaining to watch. It you know, it's so fun. Yeah. To watch, yeah. But just, yeah, it's not necessarily <laughs> one that's, that's good long-term. Um, right. 
<laughs> Which again, none of none of us are going to be crying about that, right? I mean, no, I believe no, it. no. But what do you guys think the match is going to be like? Seems to be good. I hope so. I don't know, man. Cena's not been good in the ring since like. Yeah. The last time I thought he was really good in the ring was uh, his last run up through New Orleans. That's fair. Like in the Rumble when he was in the Final Four or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then he had the five-way and then the AJ match on SmackDown. That was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, the, of course, the Taker squash was fun, but it wasn't much of a match. Yeah. Right? Um, but I, I thought that was the last time he was actually good in the ring. <laughs> I yeah. Mean, the Roman match was okay. It was fine. I mean, it was more of a spectacle. The Roman match was okay, but he just, I don't think he's been good in the ring for a while. Like Every time he's shown up, he's not looked very good to me. Yeah. But he also hasn't done much other than the Roman match, so I can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is actually a really good point. Theory hasn't really been able to show that he can do the big match stuff, and that is basically all Cena can do now. So, Well, the thing we've seen in this interest is he's like obviously a great pro wrestler, or mm-hmm. at least was, but he's not like a really smooth worker, right? He's not a guy who has like natural sort of fundamental to fall back on when he's been out of the ring for a while. When he's, when he's rusty, you can see it, right? Like he's a very mm-hmm. clunky guy. And also, he's, calling, you know, remember that at the end of the yeah. year? Oh, mm-hmm. That was that was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Ref Jess, I felt bad, but she, you could hear her calling, not making all oh, the you ref could. calls. Oh, you could. You could, yeah. That yeah. was Mike mm-hmm. very yeah. well, too well. <laughs> I mean, he's borderline charming when he does it at this point, right? Like, he's <laughs> it's just, he's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. I think he's very, he looks. In the Roman match, while I enjoyed what they did, the story was that he was kind of finished. Like, Roman kind of had his way with him until the final stretch where they did their finishes. Mm-hmm. And I just – I don't know if Fury can be as compelling in that spot, right? Can Fury mm. – can he can he control – if Cena's idea is that Fury's going to be a step quicker the whole way, can Fury do that in a way that's captivating for a stadium crowd? Yeah. We're probably going to find out because I think that's the story they're probably going to tell. So, yeah. Mm. Be interesting. Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, I'll have to wait and see. Um Going to SmackDown, Oracle, just a couple things. Like, do you think the Sheamus and Drew match is just going to end double count out or whatever next week? And there, because it seems like they're going to do triple threat. I think it's going to end in a double count out or double yeah. or something like that, double knockout or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'll have a triple threat. Yes. Yeah. That seems to be the move. And then, uh, yeah, we talked about Charlotte and Shotzi already a little bit. It wasn't <laughs> ideal. <laughs> um, yeah, it sucked. It's yeah. Rough. Uh, but we got our first Hall of Famer finally. I know we were talking about the Hall of Fame a couple weeks ago. Rey Mysterio, which was a big surprise to me. There was a rumored name earlier Friday, and I kind of thought they'd just do that one. And uh, yeah, they did Rey Mysterio. So I'm pretty fired up. Uh, obviously, one of my favorites of all time. But you know, Oracle, if you want to just share some thoughts on Rey Mysterio and how this uh, factors into the build for Mania. Yeah, first of all, let me bury that piece of shit, Contrarian Alex, who said <laughs> before Ox Baker. He's he should be ashamed of himself. Man. He should. <laughs> Despicable. One of his of all of the contrarian plays he makes, that one is the worst every time. Oh. Every time. Oh. <laughs> um but yeah, Ray Ray is arguably my all time favorite wrestler. Um I've always been a huge, huge fan of his. I'll never forget getting the um so I was okay, so I was always a big Ray fan. Mm. And I got the Biggest Little Man DVD that came out, I think, after his first huge surgery in, like, Mm. 06 or whatever. Yeah. 07. One of the best compilation DVDs of all time. Um, Just an incredible DVD. Um, Watched it through, you know, two or three times. Um and then not long after that, I think I did the WCW Smoke's Choice Project. And, you know, uh, of course, I, I, I'd already been a big Ray fan because he was on SmackDown and we didn't get SmackDown live um, in Chattanooga at the time. So, you know, either you'd have to watch it when it would change times on Saturday when it would air whenever we could get it or, you know, we'd, we'd tape it or whatever. But like mm-hmm. we, we didn't see it every week. So Ray was always a special kind of thing to see on the, on the big four pay-per-views. Um, but <clears throat> then of course, you know, we eventually got smacked down in, in, in 06 and I was able to watch him weekly, but, um, he, uh, he's just, he, to me, he's the best television wrestler ever in terms of, you know, he has the highest, 
he has the highest floor yeah. um, in terms of work rate, you know, in, in a match. Like he never, <clears throat> I've, I've, I've watched enough Ray to where I've seen one or two matches that, that I would definitely call bad, you know, usually, but it, it was never because of the work. It was always because of the booking. Mm-hmm. Um, but he has the highest floor I've ever seen as a, of, of a wrestler ever, maybe. Yeah. Um, and there have been times where it looks like he's washed up or, or, or finally slowing down. That's happened mm-hmm. once or twice in the last decade, mm-hmm. right? For sure. But then he goes back to, you know, <laughs> Mexico or whatever and gets stem cells and he comes back and, and you know, I mean, you know, people make a joke about it, but it's, you know, it's, it the happened, truth, yeah. you know? Yeah. And he, and he comes back and he's, and he's, you know, just looks like he was, you know, just, you know, whenever, um, mm-hmm. I'll never forget when it was, uh, uh, a, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Eduardo on, uh, on Twitter posted a, uh, like two videos next to each other when Ray and Andrade were having their feud in early 2019. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Eduardo posted, Ray from like a nitro or like me, it might've even just been the Eddie Havoc match from like 97. Okay? Mm-hmm. In fact, he might, it might even been an ECW match with like psychosis or Hoobie from 95. And then he posted the, the stuff he was doing with Andrade in you know, January of 19. And it's like amazing. I mean, it's just, it's incredible, man. Like <clears throat> he just, he's, he's got these all time great feuds um, with Eddie, with with Punk, with Jericho, Jericho, yeah. Um, even underrated feuds that people don't really talk about much that were really good, like Batista when when yeah. when Batista turned heel. Oh, uh, you know, it was a one sided feud, but it was a really mm-hmm. good feud. You know, he had Ray, some uh, mm-hmm. he had some good televisions with Mark Henry too. Some mm-hmm. really oh, good yeah, ones. Absolutely. Yeah, great, great match. Like he he, it's just man, like. Even the Rollins feud, yeah, the eye for an eye stuff was still, but like when they got Dominic yeah. and stuff involved, that was really mm-hmm. good stuff. The really Brock good. feud in twenty nineteen, uh, that was awesome. You know, um, just just an all time great. Um, I did not expect him to get announced because yeah. uh, I think PW Insider posted the the uh, Great Muda news, mm-hmm. and I thought they were going to announce Muda because I wasn't. I wasn't like up to speed. Maybe, maybe this, maybe this had come through leak through or something. But I wasn't. I don't think I so. Yeah, I didn't check the uh... when they announced him. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, and of course, uh, you know, we'll we'll I'll, I'll let Joe and and Bobby talk about Ray a little bit, but and then we'll transition into the awesome segment with Dom, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this was I don't know, man. Like I could go on and on and on all day about this shit, but Ray's Ray's, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah, one of the best ever. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Um, I just, you know, Oracle covered a lot of it, but yeah. to me, it's like there's been a genuine correction in recent years where people have appreciated Ray. I, I think the internet could fool you and say otherwise, but I actually think this comeback running WWE has done a lot for his legacy in terms of yeah. people realizing, kind of reminding themselves how great he is, especially is. Um, you know, as wrestling nerds, we kind of take it for granted, but like. It is cool. I mean, he's getting in the Hall of Fame as an active wrestler. He was on the front cover of the fucking 2K game a couple yeah. of years ago, which is like, that's cool, man, for a guy who's, you know, only 30, what, well, 30 years into his career? Like, something mm-hmm. around yeah. there, right? Um, maybe at least 25 years past his physical prime, and he's on a 2K fucking video game cover. Yeah. Like, as an active guy, again, let me reiterate, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I think everyone has kind of began to appreciate who he has always been and who he continues to be. He's still a guy that, Whenever he has a singles match of substance, I try and seek it out at some point or another. Um, brilliant wrestler. I mean, one of the most um, unique combinations of like physical skill and ability and psychology and mental smarts. I mean, he is a genius who could fly out unlike any other. And that mm-hmm. is very seldom two skill sets that overlap the way they did with Ray. And it allowed him to age very gracefully. You know, when his body was really beat up, because honestly, he's looked fresher in the last few years than he did at times during his first run in WWE because he was really beat up for a while. Yes. Um, and that was pre-stem cell treatment, as Oracle alluded mm-hmm. to. So, <laughs> you know, you, you watch him in like the mid-2000s and he's maybe their best wrestler and it's because he's just so smart. He evolved so much as a wrestler. You know, mm-hmm. and his psychology and his structure, his pacing. Oracle and I could do a four-hour show. Oh, God, I know. <laughs> he's, 
He's one of the most iconic wrestlers ever. This yeah. is the best way to explain it. You know, truly influential, truly singular in wrestling history. And I'm just so happy to see the wrestling world continue to kind of celebrate him while they can because he's the man. you got to appreciate him while he's still doing this thing. You know, he's, he's forever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, played a big part uh, getting SmackDown off the ground when they uh, yeah. did the brand split as well, part of the SmackDown 6, obviously. Um, top five or ten baby face probably ever as well um yeah. just just yeah. remarkable man i'm happy for him um you know as oracle said the brock feud a few years ago was awesome the match was awesome um yeah just great stuff man oracle uh, i know you want to talk about how you think it's gonna uh tie into the dom match so go ahead man yeah so um i think it was announced uh that conan's gonna be his yes. uh <laughs> that'll be interesting um <laughs> but um um yeah conan's gonna be his inductee but uh i honestly think they could do a really cool angle <laughs> where uh like dom like attacks ray at the hall of fame <laughs> yeah um and i hope they do that mm-hmm. uh, um, um, my uh uh, <laughs> in mid pitch, and now you can hear him yelling no. <laughs> like, like fucking Vader and Sif. Who's coming there back? Go. Coming back. You're good. Am I here? So, yeah, I agree. With you, Oracle, he should jump oh, in with the Hall of Fame. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, come back. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, the the segment on SmackDown was amazing, man. The heat is just incredible. Like this mm-hmm. is real heat. Like I mean, about as close to as real heat as you can get. You know. In, in, in 2023, mm-hmm. this stuff fucking rules. Yeah. Like Dom's up there calling him up, and they're like, you know, you got like Judgment Day on one side and Phantasm on the other, and they're all like, and they're like getting into each other's mm-hmm. face and shit, and like calling him, like saying Eddie would have been a better dad, and soap opera shit rules, man. Like, mm-hmm. And Ray's like, I won't fight you no matter what. And of course, you know, they're, they're they're gonna do it. There's, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say at this point, if they don't have the match, they're stupid at this point. Oh, they have but, to do it. Yeah, yeah. But it's just, you know, the heat for this is just. I mean, this is an this is an awesome feud. It's the best mid card feud. But you know what though? It's Ray, man. Yeah. That's true. Ray Ray would have these feuds with like Jericho mm-hmm. and Punk. No, granted, these guys are all time greats. We mentioned, but like he would, he could, he could have these mid card feuds, man. You know that felt like. You know, upper mid card feuds that 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 could really carry a television program, mm-hmm. and he's mm-hmm. just, I don't know, man. Like he's just, like, and he's doing it with his own fucking kid who sucks. And look, Dom's a, Dom's a super fun heel. The Aquaria is awesome, but like he can't work very well. He's not that good. Of, he's he's not really a good promo. You know, and and credit to Dom and Rhea is obviously a huge part of his heat. Don't get me wrong. I mean that's. That mm-hmm. Dom would have almost mm-hmm. no heat without Rhea, but it's just I don't know, man. This this feud this feud rules. Yeah, yeah, I agree. They're both doing a great job with it, and you know, Ray refusing to hit him has been a really good element because eventually he's going to do it, and the crowd's just going to go nuts for it. Um, that's what you're looking for, man. That's what it's all about. Absolutely. All right. Sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah, we uh, covered a lot of ground here from all three shows. Uh, now we have to take our attention to see if we would buy a ticket for the house show. Mm. Joe's here to do it live this week. So, Joe, go ahead. What they offer last night? Well, morning, folks. I'm not used to doing stuff live on the air here on Twitch, so so bear with me. Um, I know that tonight they're running the garden, right? They're running MSG tonight, which is yeah, a big show. Yeah, 20-man battle royal. <laughs> mm-hmm. My God, a good old-fashioned battle royal at the garden, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, last night, we were in Youngstown, Ohio, um, the Cavelli Center, I believe that is. And I've got to say, boys, look, there's some lows here, but there are a few matches here that I need some fan cam of. You know what I mean? I need some tape. Here we go. One of my favorite odd couple tags gets us underway. Braun Strowman and Ricochet opposite the Viking Raiders. Have they done that on TV? Because that kind of sounds like a hoot. Yeah, they, they did, did that on, on TV. Was it last week or the week before? Okay. No, they, they, they did it this week. Okay, day. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to seek That's it right. out, folks. Review this week on latenightgrin.com. I love that Braun Ricochet team. It's fun, man. It's good stuff. It's good. They're fun. Street Fight. Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, my God. Kendo Sticks uh, probably present in that one. 
Up next, we have one for the Oracle of Wrestling. Mm. Santos Escobar opposite The Miz. <laughs> Natural <laughs> stylistic matchup there, of course. Got to be three and a quarter. Got <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. This is one I want to see. Six-man tag. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Rey Mysterio opposite the bloodline of the Usos and Solo Sokoa. Oh, hell yeah. Now oh, that, God. I need to see that one. That needs, that's yeah. the one I need to see the footage of. Yeah, oh, yeah, because I saw Drew do the promo of the post-match with Rey. That's that's an incredible match. You see that man. clip? Somebody, somebody posted not, a no. clip of Drew, like, you know, congratulating them on being in the Hall of Fame after the match. Did the Usos that work sounds with like a fucking... When, when Rey and Dom were attacked, did the Usos work with them? They did, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. Because I remember enjoying the Usos doing some with Ray. So, dude, the Ray and Dom Dirty Dogs matches ruled. Remember those ones? Oh, oh yeah. I remember. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, I did a review of one of those on Fight Four. Everyone was so mad. I thought it was great. I thought that one of those matches, the one when uh, the one when Dom's like not in the match the whole time. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. And Ray's just oh, cooking in there. It's like a four star match, bro. It was incredible. Um, <laughs> tag team competition. Speaking of such, Imperium. This is without Gunter. This is a uh, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. Um, opposite Legado del Fantasma, Cruz del Toro, and Joaquin Wild. Um, could be pretty good. Yeah, it'd be fun. It was that was I'd imagine that would be out of intermission, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. This is a nice trios match here. Asuka, Bianca Belair, and Candice LeRae against Damage Control. Basically, a rerun of Last Fall Feud, but with Candice LeRae and Alexa Bliss's role. So yeah, that'd probably be fun. Right? That's a pretty good one too. There. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice match. I like that. Um, and Candice and EO always have like a fun dynamic too. So, mm-hmm. um, and the main event can't win them all. Austin Fury and Seth freaking Rollins for the US title. <laughs> yeah. You can get home a little early on that one. Folks. It reminds so, me of Manny's review of Tyler Black match. Oh, like, don't get me started. He needs. <laughs> he'll be he'll be fine, folks. Don't worry about it. But so there you go, folks. John's to Ohio. Um, Oracle Bobby, would you buy a ticket? <laughs> yeah, I would absolutely. I would. That's good stuff. I'd buy a ticket. Get home a little early. Good shit, man. Real grabs. I liked it. I'm going to see cut at six, man, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about going to the house show next Sunday, um, but it's Raw exclusive. So, I mean, I'd see Cody, and but I'm going to Raw the next night, so it's not really necessary to go yeah. to both. So, I don't know. It's also like an hour and a half away, and that's really not worth driving each direction to go to a house show. In about four or five weeks, this segment is going to be filmed live from Paris. Because I would have just gone to the house show in Paris, mm. so I can tell you for a fact whether or not I did. I did buy a ticket. I can ask if you guys would do the same. But uh, oh my, I God. might change my to, answer. You're going yeah. to house show in Paris? Oh yes, oh, that's my kind of that's my kind of trip, brother. <laughs> That'll be fun. I didn't get ticket. I need to talk to my brother, but uh, I don't know. I I want to go, but you know, with with the um, you know, he's he's got a kid on the way and stuff, but. SmackDown is going to be here in Knoxville the first Friday after the Puerto Rico show, after Backlash. Oh, okay. On May 12th. Um, I'd obviously like to go because it's, you know, five miles away, but I don't know if, right. I, if I'm, I'm not going by myself. So, mm-hmm. but, could uh, be real grabs. It depends on the, the, uh, the, the redraw would have happened by then. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what yeah. the roster's like. Yeah. I, um, I hope Randy's coming back in St. Louis. I don't know what you do with him at WrestleMania, though. And him coming back to, you know, not work Mania would be strange unless he's just going to do like a throwaway match with Corbin or whatever. Well, um, if he uh, finishes his feud with Bray Wyatt, Bob, they have no. good matches at Mania. No, I don't think they should do that. The feud's sure. over. Well, depends who you ask, really. It's true. I yeah. don't forget to over, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, anyway, we can uh, go back in time now for this week in WWE history, uh, where I can never do the math. 19 years ago, tomorrow, Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania 20, where it all begins again. Um, you know, and an all time opening, you had Vince and Shane and uh, Shane's kid on the screen, that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, they have the Harlem Boys Choir saying America the Beautiful. That was fun. Um, there's there's a bit of an elephant in the room with regards to this WrestleMania because the main, bit, event, yeah. Yeah, the main event is very good and you shouldn't really talk about it because uh, Chris Benoit won. Um, but uh, what a show, man. Like, some of the undercard doesn't hit, but I think, you know, Jericho and Christian really delivered. Um you get the all-time Ultimo Dragon story of just wanting to work Madison Square Garden and then leaving the company. Uh, you know, Goldberg and Brock worked a slow plotting match for whatever reason, but, you know, Eddie and Angle had a great one. The triple threat's obviously great. Please don't cancel me. 
Um, Too late. But yeah, just just a great show. And, you know, it, it felt like all the manias on the 10s were going to be at Madison Square Garden and then 30 they put in the Superdome. But it was still a good show. So whatever. Um, Oracle, take us back to 2004. Yeah, uh, this was uh, this was a great mania. I uh, I remember watching the whole build and everything. Uh, I was very excited for it. I think it's the earliest WrestleMania of all time. I think it March is. 14th. Yeah, um, yeah, because uh, eighteen was like March fifteenth or sixteenth. But I think yeah, 11, I think that was on. I think it was St. Patty's Day. Okay, that's yeah. fair. Um, but uh, yeah, this this was a. Uh, a, uh, a great show, obviously. Uh, very much a Debbie Downer now. Um, but uh, one one match I do want to pimp is the uh, Rock and Sock versus yes. Evolution match. Uh, that yeah. match is actually good. Yes, that like good. Is. that match rule. <laughs> that match actually kind of rules. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get some flair rock too at got the garden. That's cool shit, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, like the part where Rock does the strut. Oh, that fucking rules. It's great. Um, yeah. yeah, that I, that match is really really good. Um and and really one of the more underrated like mania matches. Because I remember at the time as a kid, like I I was bummed because I was you know I was super into the Foley Orton feud and like when when you know Mick took the fall fall I was so bummed as a kid because you know I was like you remember mm-hmm. the post match he's so dejected but like now when you get you know you looking back at it you know, of course Orton needed to win you know um, mm-hmm. but um, yeah that's just that's a match that that is uh, really underrated. Of course, I loved the Christian Jericho match at the time. Um, the Trish feud or the uh, the Trish turn was done really well, mm-hmm. and uh, I actually think this is the point. Trish as a worker got better from like 02 to 04, but in terms of an overall package, I actually think this is when she got to be like a really good performer overall. Was 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 when she turned heel. Uh, yeah, at this show. Um, so those, you know, um, obviously, uh, the, uh, more depressing things, uh, can do, you know, can be talked about, uh, by other people, but, um, yeah, this was, you know, those, the, the, those are the two things I kind of wanted to point out. Yeah. Is this, uh, Jesse Ventura's last WWE appearance or did he do one of those old school shows? It is not. So mm-hmm. when they did the raw guest host things, he was, yeah. I think he was a guest host. Yeah, he was late 09. Yeah. It was ruled when I was in high school, and he invented commentary for yeah, Battle and, Royal that's right. that Sheamus won to set up his number one contendership to for where he eventually won his first world title against mm-hmm. Cena in that tables match. They also did that segment where he like tore Vince apart. They did a backstage segment, remember? In oh, the office? yes, that's right. Yeah, where he, like he tore apart. He, he said, like, you know, he, he, your dad gave you all this, or whatever he said, he'd be ashamed. Wait, how come you're afraid? It's Jesse, bro. I mean, I there's, a, there's some great Jesse things when I was a kid. Like, there was a time where he, uh, of course, I got Summer 99 all the time from Blockbuster, but when he was the ref in the main event. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But um, the, the, the Raw where he showed up uh, in June of 2001 um, in, uh, in Minneapolis. And uh, Vince was like telling Jericho he couldn't have a match. It's like Jericho and Austin or whatever. And Jesse Ventura shows up and he goes, this is my building, my city. And <laughs> he's unbelievable. And, you know, Vince was doing his faces, you know, and like, and so they ended up setting up Jericho and Austin for the belt. Like I remember watching that as a kid because Jericho was my favorite as a kid. So yeah, yeah. but uh, that, that's a, that's a fun Jesse memory. But, and of course uh, the, the, uh, at WrestleMania 20, he's, you know, Donald Trump, would you mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is uh, way funnier. Much funnier, funnier than now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Oracle, do we have anything we need to change on our Mania card? I don't think too much change this week, except it is a trios match now for the women. We still don't know what they're doing with tag titles. Um, it might but... be best not to do anything with it. Just keep the trios match. I know. Yeah, it seems like it. I guess if Ronda can go, they'll do a tag title match. But if she can't, they'll just keep the trios because that seems like the tag team they're building to. But, but I mean, if Ronda can go, how the heck are they going to have a tag title match? Are they just going to get the belts off of them, aren't they? Yeah, that's the other thing. Because I don't think they're going to work both nights. Because mm-hmm. you know that doesn't seem to be something that anyone's doing this year. So, so they so they've got the eight announced, right? Yes, I think we're up to eight. And then the four more they haven't gotten to yet, which is Sammy and Kevin versus the Usos, mm-hmm. Bobby and Bray. Yes. <laughs> um, 
They still Rain actually, Dom, and then Edge and Bow. I mean, I mean, Edge and Bow is going to get made tomorrow, right? Like with their face to face. I think so. Some people are saying it's going to be like a career threatening match, or whatever. Hmm. Hmm. Are they still building to Bobby and Bray, or the, what's the deal with that? Be they they didn't sell. do anything. Oh, simple. I'm trying to remember if they did anything on Raw with it, but they didn't do anything on SmackDown with it. So <laughs> Oracle gesturing with his hands. <laughs> There we go. He's back. <laughs> yeah, Oracle, did they do anything with Lashley and Bray on Raw? I don't think they did. I don't think so, no. I mean, the match is mm. certainly still going to happen, I would think. Hmm. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Interesting. Very mm. interesting. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. weird, though, because, yeah, Lashley beat up Uncle Howdy last week, and they just never followed up on it. Mm. Very interesting. <laughs> Maybe Wait it's not so easy now. to book Bray Wyatt, folks. I don't know. Oh, Wait tough. a minute now. <laughs> Keep your eye on that one, folks. Um, uh-uh. Carry on. Where, where, where are we on the card, boys? Where are we at? So we got, <laughs> we got those we got those matches to add. What else have we got? I don't think they've technically announced uh, Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. Oh, yeah, they have. Okay. And that's on night one. So that's confirmed for that. Oh. Um, Alex, Alex that's... dodged a bullet there, didn't he? <laughs> 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 Alex, Alex would not have been happy if he attended no. that one. Yeah, it kind of feels like they might do six and six instead of seven and seven, which is yeah. fine. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, I think as far as our card goes, we pretty much don't have much to change. Uh, we have it almost. Uh, I'm a little surprised Brock's going to be on Raw tomorrow. I don't know what else they need to do to build that match, but I guess a little brawl or something. Yeah, I guess. Sure. <laughs> that match will be fine. I talked about it last week. Like everyone's worried, but it'll be all right. Well, I mean, I, I mean, almost should be pretty worried, but yeah. Well, but yeah. I think it'll be yeah. fun. I honestly do. I, I just, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a sad usage of Brock, but I agree with you. It'll probably be a fun mm-hmm. sprint. Yeah. I mean, Sheamus and Gunther main eventing night one is not the worst idea. They've kind of played up Sheamus, uh, you know, only needing the Intercontinental title. Um, I would still probably do the Usos and uh, yeah. Kevin and Sammy, but like it's not the worst idea. Okay, I'm not saying they shouldn't because I think they should, but I'm starting to think that that tag nut match is not going to main event night one. It's, it's going to be weird out. and Charlotte. Yep, and people are going to be, and we're going to have to hear about it all. Fuck. It. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's still going to be way more. I, like, I think that match will be really good. The one thing I would say is, I don't, I don't think that assists the Charlotte rear match at all. Putting them on last person, no, but. You know, I think I think Triple H would like WrestleMania to close with Rhea Ripley standing. So when I get that, so that's fair enough. That's fair. Okay, uh, Fed Five Oracle, you got any nominees this week? I'm trying to think, who had a big week? I guess uh, Jay I'm going with Ray. Maybe. Yeah, Ray. Ray can be on there. Oh yeah. Um, Jay Uso or both Usos if you want, but particularly Jay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Who else do we got here? Hmm. John Cena I assume Uncle Harold Harold and Harold and Theory. John Cena, there you go. John Cena, that's number three. Um, not really a spot for Cody this week. He didn't do anything. He had a nice jacket. He did. He did have a nice jacket. Um... You know, Roxanne was really good in that Mako match. I mean, yeah. the Shawn Michaels angle was dumb at the end, but. All right, so put Roxanne on there, and then probably one of Sheamus or Drew. Yeah. Sheamus. Uh, yeah, we'll put Sheamus. That's yeah, fine. Put Shamo in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so there we go. We got uh, John Cena, Sheamus, Jey Uso, Roxanne, and um, who was the last one? Who did I say first? Ray. Ray. Ray Mysterio, <laughs> yes. There we go. Good job, everybody. All right. Oracle, you got anything else you want to talk about from this week? Uh, no, not really. Um, they need to get the ball rolling on to, to, you know, to heat up some of these things. Yeah. Uh, particularly the women's title stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's kind of ridiculous that the, the only feud in the women's division that has any sort of steam behind it is that trios thing mm-hmm. and that's a feud that's been bad in my opinion yeah. so i mean 
I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I saw a whole thread about how great that feud was the other day, but uh, <laughs> uh, um, fucking Bob doing tweets again. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know. This is where are they going to be at TV this week? Like, what what cities? They are in Kansas City for SmackDown, and Raw is in Providence, I believe. Providence, Raw. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. They just they 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 need to get at least two of the next four Mania matches uh, set in place. That's fair. Yeah, I think really all four of them. But you know, yeah, uh, I'm trying to be realistic here. That's fair. Okay, yeah. Uh, anything to plug for the week? Uh, Historical Oracle on Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Not 8 a.m. Eastern Time. No. <laughs> that'd be pretty soon. That'd be, that'd be like noon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, flagship on Thursday. Uh, I don't know. There's That's a fair. bunch of stuff going on. Fleet Week, of course, immediately following us at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Um, we've got some things cooking down the road. Oh, yeah. A couple weeks away from Mania. We're going to have ourselves a uh, deciding the decade of Mania, oh, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Be cooking. We'll be cooking. We'll be cooking, boys. I actually yeah. have some news about WrestleMania week, folks. Oh, That's all I'm going to say. That week... The flagship may be going old school. You know what I mean? We're going to be throwing it back. I'm sure all of you have come to love those episodes of Raw they do where they just use old logos. And <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing with the late night green on the WrestleMania week. So stay tuned on that. Uh, there may also be a game night. Much And also, there may just be a WrestleMania 19 uh, uh, watch along there, grin along. Yeah. Maybe. Hopefully. I know Bobby wanted to do that. So. I don't know what you think, Oracle. It sounds like a pretty good idea to me. So maybe maybe a date. Yeah. Great mania. Right. Great, great mania. Oh, so yeah. That'd be something yeah. we might try and work in. Uh, I'd like to work, you know, watch that on here with you folks. And I know Bobby, that was your pitch, right? Yep. Yeah, I'm looking tremendous. forward to it. Hopefully we can uh, figure out a date. Tremendous, tremendous. Um, Bob, folks, I'll see you on Fleet Week, Bobby. Take your time, mate. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us for Late Night Grin. Uh, Joe, or uh, uh, what's it called? Fed Dead, not Late Night Grin. That's on Thursdays. Well, this is I'll not the late be night grin. this week. That's true. That's what the platform's called, but yeah. I'll not be on the flagship on Thursday. Um, so I'll be back next Sunday for this show. Great promotion, next time <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe and Oracle plugged all their stuff. We hope you enjoyed the show and enjoy this outro. 